There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. shame is undone your presence Lord hallelujah glory to God Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the Hallelujah, Lord, we welcome. 
from you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be We'll never stop. We can't live 
set our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume God, all oh, we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours.
look at somebody and tell them I'm going on with Jesus. Amen. Amen. She had to sing that last verse twice because the devil was trying to stop her. She said, oh, devil, look, I'm going on. Come on, somebody. But I, I love those words. So many people is watching what you and I do. And you don't know how much hope you can give somebody that might be going through something. They see you going through it, but you're not throwing your hands up and quitting. You're getting on your knees and praying. Come on, somebody. And through the midst of all that, glory to God, to give encouragement and strength to somebody as the Lord would just gracefully and graciously touch them. Amen. The book of Ephesians tonight. The book of Ephesians chapter number 1. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Praise God. Ephesians chapter number 1. We'll take our text out of 18. Start in the verse number 15. You get it, say amen tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now listen to some of the words Paul is writing, and he's not writing from the, from the Hilton. He's not writing from a five-star hotel. He's not on a, on a cruise or a yacht. Only cruise Paul took. <laughs> amen. The storm tried to tear the, tear the ship up. Glory to God. Amen. He's writing from a prison cell. Ephesians 1 and 15, Paul says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of, of you in my prayers. How many of you praise for each other? Amen. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may... Now, this is what Paul's praying for. May give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Verse 18 says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of His glory of His inheritance in the saints. It's a good, let's read another verse. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to usward who believe according to the working of His mighty power? Amen. Father, we love You tonight. We thank You for the Spirit of the Lord we feel in this house. I ask You tonight, hide me behind Your glorious cross and speak through these lips that You've created. Lord God, give us the understanding of Your Word the relationship in spirit as you love the body of Christ. In Jesus' wonderful name, the church would say, Amen. I want to preach a thought tonight simply entitled, Enlightened. Enlightened. Paul said that the eyes of your understanding, and he's not talking about your physical eyes spiritual being that Christ lives in you now, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of His glory of His inheritance in the saints. Amen. Now, he also spoke another word before enlightened. He said, the eyes of your understanding. Amen. You know, it'd be a sad thing if we just come to church twice, three times a week, every month, every year, and never really understood the concept of why we're even here on this earth. And I, I don't want to be mistaken. I, I don't want people to leave here never learning anything, never coming into the full knowledge and the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, never walking in perfection with the Lord, never growing in grace. Amen. Never knowing the understanding and the importance and the significance of the blood of Jesus. And all these times when, we, when you read your word or when you're praying, amen. 
Glory to God. When you hear the word preached or whatever it might be, that all of a sudden you get revelation or you get knowledge. Basically, you've been enlightened to the fact of something. Now, the understanding, the mind or the heart, the thoughts and the feelings. Amen. Look, the old nature. Our old, I don't want you to go back too far in life, but you can remember before you had the newness of Christ living in you, right? Come on now. The rest of you is lying. Don't deceive yourself. I know you was probably born with a little angel halo, but I want to tell you was born into sin. Glory to God. But thank God, Brother Doug, that Jesus paved the way. He paid the price, uh, and he desired you and I to be partakers uh, of the good nature of Christ. And if we were born again, glory to God. And after that, that old nature, listen, has no ability to discern the principles of God nor the power to discern eternal good. A dark heart, which is a blind heart, is really a foolish heart. Only by the Lord enlightening our heart is it possible for us to know His truth and love. That's why so many of God's people are still beat down, not understanding the perfect scripture of John 3 16 for God so loved the world he give his only begotten son friend I want to tell you God looked past our faults and he saw our needs come on huh? he saw you and me in our, our wretchedness uh, he saw us in our despair and our hopeless situation we might have had a pocket full of money might have lived in a big house uh, might drove a nice vehicle but if we were, if we were lost uh, we were on our way to a devil's hell with no hope but the Lord interrupted and intercepted the plan of Satan and had oh Christ died for our sins that when we would repent and I love this part when we would repent when we would come to God in brokenness and say God forgive me I'm sorry it's under the blood of Jesus now and the Lord himself will never remember that again hallelujah so look now, our, only by the Lord enlightening our heart is it possible for us to know that His truth and His love. Divine things are seen better with a pure heart than the natural mind. Jesus said, blessed be the what? Pure in heart. For they shall see God. Amen. So the purifying of the heart is the enlightening of the spiritual eyes. I mean, he's with me tonight. Amen. Look at this now. Paul is praying for the church. A church that's able to see the things of God. He prays that by spiritual insight, they might see more. Or another word, might know what, that they might know what is the hope of his calling. And that's what I want to talk to us a little bit tonight about that hope. Of the call. Amen. The word hope here simply in the Greek uh, w w would mean expectation or confidence. Now remember Abraham lived in a pagan nation, did he not? He heard the call of God to leave his father's house and separate himself entirely and to go into a land he's never seen. So what was the hope of his calling? Genesis 12, 1 through 3 says this. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee, watch the promises of God. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now, this would only come to pass after Abram, uh, dis, uh, he begins to demonstrate obedience. Because even later on in, in biblical history, there was an old prophet that told a king this, it's better to obey than to sacrifice, right? Uh, simply this, we can, uh, we can come and do all the churchy things. We can, Paul said, I can, I can uh, speak in tongues, I can feed the poor, I can do all these things. But if I have not love, I, I have nothing, amen. Uh, because Paul knew the 
concept uh, that he was born again uh, because God loved him. Amen. Uh, oh, friend, listen. Uh, so the hope that they're talking about now uh, is not just, uh, I hope it rains. Uh, I hope it don't get too cold. Uh, I hope a tree don't fall on my house. Come on. Uh, I hope I don't have a flat tire tomorrow. That's not what Paul's talking about. Uh, he's talking about the, the expectation uh, or the confidence uh, that you and I fits in the plan of God uh, and that God somehow, some way, uh, we hope that we can be saved. No, sir. I expect now, since I've been saved, uh, to be uh, to receive the benefits uh, of the blessings of God. Uh, I'm not talking about winning the sweepstakes. Uh, I'm not maybe talking about ever getting filthy rich, uh, but I can lay my head on a pillow tonight uh, and I know with an assurance uh, that I'm in the will of God and that Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. Friend, listen, the hope, the, the confidence. Oh, God, I got confidence in my God. Man, you got confidence in Jesus, don't you? Don't put your confidence in flesh. Amen. Put your confidence in, in the Lord. Listen now. And he told Abram, you do. You get out of that country and from thy kindred's house and from the father's house and in, 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 in that strange land unto a land that I will show you. Let me tell you what's going on here. He's talked to a man now that, that really doesn't have a concept of, in the knowledge of who God really is, but he's, he's come to understand that there's a God in heaven that's calling him to do something. And he's made him some promises here, but the only way he's going to receive the promises is, like I said, through obeying. So he packed his bags one day and he got Sarai. Amen. This is before the covenant now. This is before the, the name changes here. And, and there's a nephew Lot. And he gets all his sheep and his cattle and everything that he has. Uh, he waves by to everything behind him. Uh, not because he's too good to fellowship with them. Uh, not because he's better than them. It's because he's going to obey a divine command. Uh, that's what's wrong with the church today. Uh, oh, listen. Uh, when God tells you something uh, and you know that it's God. Glory to God. Uh, Man, I, I, I tell you, I felt just like a knucklehead. I'm a, I come in here this evening. I've been wondering what's been wrong. Oh, let me go help you. Let me help somebody tonight. I said, I come back here. I send people to this contraption up here on the ceiling, this air-conditioned heat pump thing. And I'm like, it don't ever work. It never cools off. It never heats up. I don't understand it. So I looked at it. I just kind of shook my head like, you devil, you. I come up here before service. And I begin to pray. And I'm just a praying and minding my own business. And all of a sudden, I got enlightened about something. Hallelujah. God said, go back there and grab a hold of that remote control. I want to show you something. I took it out of its little sleeve because that's where we always fooling with it when it's in its little sleeve there. And God said, look at that thing. Now go stand in front of it and mash a button. I took it out of the sleeve. I got in front of it. I mashed a button. And that thing works like a brand new one. Hallelujah. God said, you see that little eye? in the front of that remote control it's got a sensor that it's got to communicate with come on somebody I'm about to have a shouting fit here he said you've been trying to control something from behind it you need to get out in front of it hallelujah somebody God told Abram he said I want to make you Abraham I want to make you the father of many nations but you got to get out in front of it you can't just hope in some casual way that it's going to come to pass you got I expect it to come to pass. Tell me you can't teach old dog new tricks, huh? Come on now. Listen. So dear God in heaven, been here how many years and just now learning that? Come on. Well, all you brain surgeons act like you knew it. I didn't see you fixing the problem. Come on now. Hallelujah, the hope. So Abraham packed and he... He began to walk. Listen, the hope. So listen, he says, and I will bless them, or I will make you a great nation. And I'll bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless him that bless thee, curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now watch this. So the hope was a seed. And the land that the seed would grow and multiply. You see, you got to understand, with our spiritual eyes open, there is the same possibility 
of a great nation living in every one of us. We always looking at this one and looking at that one. Some of the younger converts might look at Sister Harriet and say, Boy, I wish I was spiritual Sister Harriet. Sister Harriet didn't start this race with nothing that you ain't started with. She, you got the same measure of faith that God deposited in her. What's happening with her or, or, or others is become you allowing God to cultivate you. In fact, watch this. The psalmist says, break up thy fallow ground. He didn't say God was going to break the fallow ground. This is the heart now. He's given you the ability through Christ, amen, to, because the Bible says that, that, uh, that the, the, the flesh has got to be mortified, amen, because his flesh is an ugly creature, and he's got he's to stay dead at Calvary or in the altars, amen. But we got to have, we got to sanctify the flesh and the spirit. Come on now. I wish you could get a hold of this, because listen, it's easy to, 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 uh, to mortify the flesh flesh uh, but to be sanctified to be set apart to be separated uh, into the act of consecration now that's what God's doing Abram uh, you got to leave everything you're familiar with come on somebody you got to get past and get away from things uh, that you could always lean on uh, amen uh, you got to come into a place that I'm going to show you when you get there because if I tell you how to get there and let you go on your own you'll mess it up uh, so he's just simply saying this uh, Follow me. Follow me. You remember it, Moses? You remember when it was time to come out of Egypt? Do you remember what led them? A cloud by day. It turned to fire at night. God could not just send them out there and hope they would get across. He led them out. Paul says, be led. Walk in the spirit. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I thank God God's got the ability, not only in me and every one of us, every Christian, that we know it's wrong before we ever touch it. We know it's wrong before it ever comes out of our mouth. Come on, somebody. We know it's wrong before we ever look twice at it. Because I don't want I like to talk about me, and that keeps you from getting mad at me all the time. Hey, if I talk about you, you get mad. But back in the day, I, I was just a heathen. And the devil knew my weaknesses. I walk in a store one day in hot summertime, go get me a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> And guess what? It wasn't even at Walmart. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, Brother Chad, I, I walk in. I'm just, I'm just innocent as to be. Walk in and, oh, my God. I mean, so I turn my head. Come on, somebody. The devil was setting me up. Amen. Now, everything in the old man was telling me, get you one more look before you leave. Oh, and some of you thought, oh, that was a stone just went by my head. Come on, somebody. And I had a decision to make. Come on, just because we saved, don't think we're going to attempt it. I had a decision to make. I got something sitting on one side, something sitting on the other, and it's telling me totally different. <laughs> Come on. But I said, devil, oh, yes, sir. Glory to God. But you know what? It don't matter if you saved one day or 101 years. That thing's going to always. Abram had to come to a place that he would break away from everything that he knew to go find the newness in God, friend. And that become the hope and the expectation friend. Listen here now. The hope was a seed. I'm going to read it again. In the land that the seed would grow and multiply with our spiritual eyes open there's the same possibility of a great nation within us. In order for Abraham to see this come to pass he must come out of his own understanding and walk by faith and not by sight. Come on now. People that walk by sight does not nor will not or will not fulfill the plan of God 
in their lifetime. See, you got to understand, we got to come out to go in. Oh, that's just good. Not because I'm saying but that's just good. That, that, that's why you all through the Scriptures you say, come out from among them. Be you separate. Say the Lord. Come on. You got to come out to go in. Before Noah ever built that ark, and I don't know, I wasn't there, but I just got to feel and believe that Noah figured it'd be more people believe his message. Now, it's never rained. It's never been a dew on the ground. And here's this preacher out there beginning to build a monstrosity. And them neighbors would come up there and said, Man, what are you building? They didn't have Mr. Webster to explain what a boat was. There was, listen, they couldn't Google the boat. They just had to believe the preacher. Come on. They had to believe that he was speaking for God, not about God now. For 120 years, he beat on that on them boards and he put that boat together and he, he slimed it with pitch. He, he, my God, he sealed the cracks. That's what I'm saying. Amen. And he preached. The Bible, Peter called him a righteous preacher. He preached daily. You know he, he wasn't preaching well. Everybody can be charismatic. Everybody can speak in tongues. Everybody going to get a brand new car. Oh no, none of that junk. He was warning them for the dangers to come. Amen. He was preaching exactly what John the Baptist was preaching, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. Hallelujah. And listen, he preached for a hundred and twenty. Don't you know he had to believe in his heart? Don't you know he even had a, a hope? Amen. That others would receive the word and come in into their sanctuary of safety. But then uh, was not the hope God was trying to prescribe uh, amen to Abraham uh, Abraham's hope wasn't the things he could naturally see but the things that his spiritual man would expect to happen uh, I'm expecting this place to get so full uh, with the glory of God uh, and with the people uh, of the communities around here uh, and we got to we'll be forced to be a bigger uh, not because I'm trying to be uh, famous uh, not because we're trying to be somebody but I believe that God desires to bring a revival in this last day that we must not hallelujah glory to God amen somebody listen now listen what is the Christian hope now remember again it expectation or confidence Man, I just expect him to, to meet God when I come to this place. But I still expect to meet God when I'm driving down the road to go roll a, paint, uh, roll a, a wall. Amen. I felt God in stores and jobs. I felt God sitting in a bass boat right as the sun become to come up and just casting that lure but just get so caught up with the beauty around me of God that one just about jerked the pole out my hand oh that's Amen. Just get caught up in a deer stand with a light fog. Some of you hunters is getting revved up now. A light, it's a cool morning. It's a light fog, kind of right about eye level out there. And all of a sudden, or doe ears waving in it. Come on, somebody. It wouldn't matter to me. Amen. I could, Brother Alcy just got back from this trip. He sent me a picture. I'm almost going to have to see the mountain to believe. Come on. Because that thing is a moose in a deer disguise. Amen. But I can only imagine, Brother Chris, I get worked over over a little uh, spike. Amen. I can only imagine what he must have saw and his heart must have reacted. 
Hallelujah. But can I tell you, because I know he's a man of God, that ain't a drop in the bucket of what he feels and senses when God puts his hand on him. Come on, some. And our hope is an expectation that every time we open those church doors or wherever we find ourselves, we can meet God face to face. Come on, somebody. I want to tell you, I'm not hoping my children to be saved. I'm expecting my children to be saved. I'm not hoping that we just get a full parking lot. I'm expecting for a full parking lot. You got to come to a place that you walk in faith. Not by glory to God. Glory to God. Let's get enlightened. Amen. We hope to stay under divine protection. Now watch this. You got to remember this because if you just hear somebody say it like that and take it at that. But we expect it. So let me change the word for you. What it really means in the Greek. We hope. We we. We expect to stay under divine protection. We have confidence. It's expectation and confidence. We expect or have confidence that all things work together for the good to those that love God. Abraham believed in hope, expectation, or confidence. He belie- Listen, Paul wrote in a book that he wrote to the Romans about Abraham way back yonder. Chapter 4, verse 17 through 21, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. And he's just rehearsing what God told Abraham back in Genesis. Before him, whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. I I got to inject something right here. You, you You got to know this. Quickeneth the dead. Paul used that same term in the book of Ephesians. And ye hath he quickened. That's okay. So you mean talking about just raising somebody from the dead? So, raising you and I up to be Christians. Y'all stay with me now. Because we were all born again. And I guarantee you, you remember when you truly got saved. You were walking dead, folks. You had good jobs. You had this. You had that. But if you had no salvation with the Lord, you had no enlightenment of God. Amen. You might have heard him preach. They might have sang songs about him. You might have, listen, I was teaching a Sunday school class. I would clap my hands to the music. I'd say amen to the, to the preaching. But I had no enlightenment who Jesus was. Come on. But I remember exactly when I, re, when I yielded myself to God and said, Lord, if you'll inhabit this old vessel and make me new, I'll I'll live for you every day. Come on. I tell you what I was looking at a whole lot this evening before God put this on my heart. I was looking at being double minded. Amen. Double minded. He's uh, That man becomes unstable in all of his ways. Amen. Floats this way. Floats that away. I, listen. Uh, I, I don't know how. I don't want to know how that is. I, I just want to read that word uh, in faith and in the spirit of God and study it out and walk it and believe it and trust it come on you got to do more than just believe you got to trust sometimes friend because the devil's going to push back on your belief system huh? the devil's going to torment you Stand up and say, I be- everybody, every Pentecostal, every Baptist, Catholic, everybody's got to believe. And they said, well, I'm this, I'm that. But it comes to a place uh, of revelation is when you learn to trust God. Uh, when you're in, when you're dark times. Uh, when you come to trust God. Like you spent your last penny. Uh, and guess what? The new month of bills is rolling around. Uh, you got to learn to trust God. Uh, when you get bad news on that phone. Uh, my God, it's God never said it would be easy. Uh, but he did say if you'll put your hand in his hand, he will take you into places and enlighten you that you will know and understand that God somehow, some way, in some fashion will always have you. And he will never let you go. Amen. Listen, verse 18 said, talking about Abraham, who against hope believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations according to, to that which was spoken, so shall, watch this, thy seed be. 
And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old. Huh? Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded. I want you to say that with me. Being fully persuaded that what he had promised. Now this is, I could read it like this. What God had promised, God was able also to perform. You listening to me? Against hope. For Abraham, human reasoning and carnal understanding was gone. His confidence in God and in His promise was genuine faith. Let me say this while Brother John and that group gets ready tonight. And, and I want you to understand me. Somebody say, don't, don't want you preaching to me in a minute. Say, well, you're snared by the words of your mouth with the words you just said. But watch this. You've got to know by now, at times we expect stormy journeys but we know Christ is beside us every step we expect to be tempted but no Christ has already defeated the tempter we expect to be slandered but our hope is in the faithful judge that's Christ sustained now sustained in this hope we dread no labor and we fear no difficulty. Our hope is that the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want. Our hope is that goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Our hope is in the Christ of the resurrection. So some of you have already forgot what hope is. Is here in the scriptures. So let me read it like this. Our expectation, our confidence is that the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want. Come on, somebody. Our confidence is in that the goodness and the mercy of God shall follow us all the days of our life. Uh, the psalmist wrote, as you stand to your feet tonight, for thou wilt save the afflicted people, but wilt bring down high looks. For thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. As low as Job got, uh, he, he said in his rights, He will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things worketh God oftentimes with man to bring back his soul from the pit to be enlightened with the light of the living. Glory to God. How many of you tonight feels like you've been enlightened? How many tonight can say, I go, I leave, I come to this church for, with, ant, with, with problems. I, I need answers. And I hope and pray that God can use me enough by the word of God that you can get your answers answered. Lord, are your problems solved? Are your questions answered? Are your needs met? Come on, somebody. The illumination of the power and the plan of God is greater than any problem that you will ever have. If you will cast your confidence on the Lord Jesus that loves you, that died for you, the three days He rose again on the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I somebody clap your hands and praise the Lord Hallelujah. glory to God our hope is in Jesus hallelujah our hope is in Jesus if you don't get nothing else I say tonight just remember that our hope is in Jesus. You know, the most grievous thing the minister ever goes through is preaching at times to people that you want more for them than they want for themselves. 
You've all seen them kind of folks. They always carefree and they all got the tiger by the tail, but they they don't understand until life slaps them right in the face. And they feel defenseless. Let everybody stay with me for one more minute. I want everybody looking straight at me. If you can hear me, look at me. Now some of you think that's hard, but I want you to get this. If you don't And if you don't learn to trust Jesus, when Satan, when life slaps you and knocks you down, the first thing you're going to do is look around to blame somebody. Watch this. You're gonna, you, while you're down, that devil's going to laugh at you. And, and, and in your mind, come on. It's going to deceive you to believe that God don't love you or care for you. But because your hope is in confidence in Jesus... Because you've read and you've heard it preached and you know when Peter began to sink, the Lord reached way down and picked him up. And your world comes apart. And the greatest tragedies in life is poured on you. And you're so heavy that you can't even lift your head. It might be this message right here that you remember that Jesus is our hope. And we expect the Lord maybe not to fix our pain and our hurts, but we got an expectation and a confidence that He will never leave us nor forsake us. And there's times, and I know I most of you, if not all of you here tonight, there's times you have sit down, even like Job. And the only thing it seemed like that God left him was something that was really against him. Just curse God and die. But I believe he felt God himself just sit down beside him, comfort him, And he looked up and said, Though he slay me, yet will I serve him. Because he felt and he loved God and trusted God enough to know that he didn't understand why he was going and all the loss that he... But he trusted God enough to know that he had confidence in his relationship. That no matter he couldn't describe the heinous loss that he felt. He had a confidence. And he had an expectation that somehow, some way, and someday, maybe way down the road, God was going to restore him. And he never accused God. And when it's all said and done, Job now has been blessed twice as much with more inheritance, with more children, with more this, with more that. Because he had a confidence. Tonight, let's have confidence. Let's cast our cares upon him. Let's trust him. Let's come to know him in such a real personal way. Glory to God. How many of you tonight wants to be enlightened? Let's find an altar. Father, we pray right now. Jesus' wonderful name. God, we give you glory and praise and honor. All that you're doing, all that you're going to continue to do, God, that you enlighten us in a place of relationship. Grow us by your Spirit. We pray tonight. Hallelujah. He walks among us in all that He does. All of His mercy, all of His love. Pen of the writer to write every day. Even His word could never contain how much I. 
could never contain how much I have been blessed. I want in the winter, the flowers in spring, the laughter in summer, and the changing of leaves, and food on my table. A good place to sleep and clothes on my back and shoes on my feet for I have been blessed and I have been blessed God so good to me precious are his thoughts of you So I'll just thank him for being so kind. And God has been good, so good, as I have been blessed. There's no way I could count them. It's not enough time. So thank him for being so kind God has been good so good and I have been blessed arms that can raise voice that can talk hands that can touch things that can walk ears that can listen eyes that can see and I've got to praise him as long as I can breathe for I have been blessed a father and mother nurtured and raised a pastor to lead us an altar to pray the stripes that can heal the blood that can save brothers and sisters all the memories we made for I have been blessed Precious are his thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them. It's not enough time. So I'll just thank him for being so kind. And God has been good. So good. 